More than a million tons <clears throat> of debris is heading for the west coast of North America. <clears throat> Excuse me. After it was swept into the ocean by that massive tsunami that hit Japan two years ago, some of it has already arrived on our shores, including the small fishing boat that washed up in northern BC after more than 15 months at sea. It was found by Jean Beaver and her husband, the Fifth Estate's Mark Kelly, brought Jean back to a small fishing port in Japan to look for the boat's owners. Here's a bit of their journey. Jean is bound for ground zero of the tsunami, the town of Minami Sanriku. She's determined to learn more about the devastation of that March day two years ago that set the boat on its journey across the ocean. She also hopes to meet the owners of the boat to learn more about their loss and their lives. But when she arrives, she's greeted by the emptiness of a ghost town. And the Fifth Estates, Mark Kelly, joins us now. Mark, even watching those pictures briefly, uh, it's incredible, the scenes of, of that community. What was it like walking through there? Hey, and you know, I guess when I, when I went to, to uh, Japan, I had my own expectations, and I thought Japan being the center of industrialization, that would really see a lot of construction crews busy in the rebuilding process. But what I was really shocked to see that, yeah, I got it half right. There were crews out there, but they're still in the process of gathering debris in community after community. There are still ghost towns, still flattened. The only signs of life you see down by the water right now are these crews still collecting the debris two years later. I mean, the whole notion of reconstruction is, is still an idea, it's still a plan, and uh, the difficulty being for many of these communities, they don't want to rebuild by the water, they don't want to make themselves vulnerable to another tsunami, so they've got to move them into the hills, and that's going to take time as long as 10 years. So there are hundreds of thousands of people right now whose lives are on hold while they get that rebuilding plan in place. And then on this side of the Pacific, uh, again, I've seen the pictures, but I haven't seen it firsthand. Tell me about the, the debris field in British Columbia. Yeah, and, and why you haven't seen it, Ian, you and so many other Canadians who haven't seen this firsthand, is a lot of the debris that has hit the Canadian shores is really washing up in remote uh, locations. Of course, we saw uh, Jean Beaver, that boat washing up on this little island east of Haida Gwaii. Uh, some of it's coming uh, right now, a lot of it actually, along the northern coast of Vancouver Island, places that aren't, uh, uh, aren't there's no signs of, of, of habitation around there. So we flew over it in a helicopter to be able to see some of the stuff that's washing up there and and that's because of the currents that's bringing it there but what you're seeing more and more uh, you know things like refrigerators that are, are, are washing up and at first blush a lot of people may think that this is garbage but as we learn from that little boat that that came over these are pe people pieces of people's lives that are washing up there so that's one thing the other thing too Ian is that there's a lot of plastic most of the debris is plastic and it's really highlighting the problem of plastics that's poisoning our oceans right now and and that's a problem increasing problem as that plastic gets into the food chain, birds eating it, fish eating it, uh, ultimately we are eating it and that's leaching chemicals into us. I think for so long we've thought the plastic out in the ocean is nobody's problem. Well, as it washes up on the shores of BC, now it's becoming our problem. So much about this story that clearly is interesting and we'll get to see it tomorrow night on the Fifth Estate, 9 o'clock, 9.30 in Newfoundland. Thanks, Mark. Thanks so much, Ian.